Hello everyone, uh, welcome to a tutorial on how you can actually easily build in form with the React Hook form. Now this is going to be our get started section, so we're going to cover some of the basic stuff with the latest version of React Hook form version 7. So without further delay, let's get into this. So in here I have actually set up a really basic HTML form, um, nothing special. And we haven't actually integrated with anything to the, the hook form just yet. But what I try to demonstrate in here is how easily uh, with some of the basic HTML you can actually get get it get it working with the, the custom hook. So first thing, let's actually get in the custom hook first. We're gonna invoke the function and now we're gonna get a bunch of methods, right? So we're gonna get the register method. So regist is going to be uh, probably going to be your best friend because they allow you to register input, su subscribe to input, and also doing the type check for your input as well. So talking about TypeScript, in this example, it's actually using TypeScript. So if you're using JavaScript, that's fine as well. But I think uh, there is so much more powerful stuff within the whole form if you're actually using TypeScript. For example, in here. So let's declare... Um, form value type and we're gonna say first name is equal string basically matching exactly what we have on the form itself on the right and we're gonna have last name gonna have age you know what age we're gonna give it a number and uh, developer which is this one we're gonna give it a string as well and the missing one is actually Oh, gender. Let's give it a value. Say that yes. Nice. And we got gender. Fantastic. Now we have the entire form declared in the TypeScript. So now we know exactly what's going to be registered and what's going to send to your server or to your you know storage or whatever. We can easily plug in this type into the generic of use form hook. What this does is actually give uh, a type secret definition into the custom hook and so we can actually start to validating all your input name whether it's actually part of a form or not. Let's get into the register function to showcase the capability. Right, so let's do this first one first. Uh, this is how you actually using the register function. You call the register, you spread operator, all the props will get injected into the input itself. So this one actually validates correctly. The first name actually it, it is inside the type definition. But if we change that to first name one, nice. Now it's start to screaming at you. Okay, first name one is actually not part of the of your uh, form definition. So notice how powerful this is. If you make a mistake on your form name itself, or what input actually get registered, uh, TypeScript can straight away check whether this is correct or not. And obviously, all this magic is done through uh, a thing called template string literal, if, you, if you're interested to look it up. Cool. Uh, now we tested on the first one. Let's actually register all the rest of these inputs as well. Oops. Did I, did I accidentally? No, that's good. So simple, right? I mean, this is probably one of the reasons um, why custom hook is really great and React Hook form is just taking a lot of these kind of advantage to making the developer experience top notch. Sweet. Just by doing that, uh, now all these inputs actually get registered inside the custom hook already. Now, how we can actually retrieve the value? There's two ways of doing that. Uh, the first one is, con is called watch. So basically allow you to subscribe to your form inputs and uh, straight away re-render your input um, by user section. So let me just give a quick example. So you, if we call watch now, the moment you user start typing, uh, this get a console log and also that trigger a re-render at the root of your app. So that's really useful when you actually want to 
say for example conditionally rendering stuff if you, if you want to show something in the view um, this API is really really useful but this is not what we gonna focus on this tutorial we're gonna focus on the basic so we want to actually um, you know getting the value out of from the form first uh, we're gonna use the on submit which normally um, it's basically a callback when the form actually gets submitted. So we're gonna wrap this with handle submit as a callback inside. Oops, I messed up with the, the bracket here. Sorry about that. And let's get the data and console log out onto the string. Notice you can abstract this in into a function. We just we're just gonna take it easy in here. Um, so let's test it out. Hit the submit. Nice, it's already working. We already start actually grabbing stuff on the form. So see that just how easy hook form it is. You can easily integrate with your form with really just two methods. So it's incredible. So next thing we want to get into is um, the validation. Obviously, that's probably the reason why you're using a library uh, form is to validate your inputs. Now, in React Hook form, we have two primary way of validating your form. The first way is obviously the building, which I'm going to demonstrate in a second. The second way is using the schema. So we support schema like Yap, Vest, Zot. There is a lot of them out there. But for the simplicity of how you're getting started with, uh, I recommend you... you have a try with the building one first. So let me demonstrate you, to you. It is really, really simple as well. So I guess you're all familiar with how some of the you know native uh, HTML form constraint API. Yes, you can actually use those ones in React Hook form. For example, required. The moment you put required equal true, that means that field is actually required. So let's just quickly test that out. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcut. Um, so it demonstrate um, the focus management as well. So if I hit the submit, boom, you can see the focus gets straight away into the error message, uh, the error input itself. This is great for accessibility. These are some of the things that missing in a lot of the form library in, in React. I think this is something we actually focus a lot in React hook form. Uh, and you will find more surprise, not a surprise, more features along the way when you're getting deeper to the library. So this is really fantastic for you to, to quickly just write in validations. And let's just give another example. So we can use a maximum length as well. Oh, not max, maximum length. Say we want a maximum length to be four, right? And let's test out the validation here again. Uh, get rid of this pop-up. Focus right away into the first input. Fantastic. Let's say test. And then we hit the submit again. Notice we're not touching anything. We're just using the keyboard. That goes to the second field. Fantastic. And if we go one, two, three, we hit submit again. Notice that input is two actually on the focus itself because the validation still failed. We want the maximum length to be... No, actually, I lied. Sorry, guys, I lied. If I change that to more than four... If I hit the submit, that gets the focus. Fantastic. That's right. And if we change that to one to three, now that should be a successful submit. Beautiful. We got the form uh, pathing through correctly. And notice I haven't actually tried the the age input because it's actually a number. And this is probably one of the things that uh, quite a few developers get uh, misunderstood. If I actually submit this now you realize it's actually returning string. Yes, the native HTML actually returns string even for number type as, I mean, even for input type as number. So how can we actually deal with that? Again, we kind of realign with HTML standard again. There is this thing called value as number, and we can easily plug that in into the register function. Notice you can see we can use value as data as well. These are all standard, by the way. Just like that, boom. We got the passing down as well. So we got build law, 
Age 12, yeah, I'm pretty young. Hit the submit. Beautiful. Everything is in place. Passing is correct. So the next thing you'll be wondering, okay, so how do I deal with arrows? Uh, very good question. As you can see right now, even with submitting the whole form, the render count is actually one. You'll be like, what? How did you achieve that? Right, because we actually not even subscribe to the error message or the errors object. If you're not actually subscribing to the errors itself, React Hook form itself is not going to be rendered because um, there is nothing to update in the view except all this input that we actually collected, right? So let's open up the form state. Oops, Ooh, mistake. And then we can retrieve the errors object. Now, once you're actually reading the error objects, that means actually you're subscribing to it, right? And we can actually watch what's actually inside this error object. If we submit the form now, render counter two because we trigger re-render to showcase to to show that you actually have two arrows on the form, right? Until you actually start correcting them, you get another render and the the arrows get reduced. Now this is really really powerful because you can actually subscribe a lot deeper, which we have another custom hook for that. But uh, in this tutorial, we're just going to cover the basic. So you'll be wondering, okay, so how can I actually write an error message to indicate a user? Now, that's actually very easy as well. Uh, because now you have this whole entire error objects, right? You can check against your input name. So errors, notice how nice is that? Yes, that's TypeScript. Uh, if you're using JavaScript, you're probably not going to get that. But with TypeScript, it gives you all these autocomplete because you declared the type early on um, in the form. So if we check error the first name actually do exist, we actually want to print an error message. Uh, in this example, we're going to say, hey, this is required. And let's quickly try that out. If I, oh, that happens on change because you already submit the form. Okay, let's go. Nice. This is required appeared. So you'd be wondering, okay, this is this is cool, but can we take a step even further? Yes, obviously, you can do that uh, in schema as well, I believe. But it, what a, one of the nice thing is, we hook form in build validation can actually attach the error message as well. So you can say this is required, and we can actually print that out. First name dot message, just like that. You got your validation ready, you got your error message ready, and you can even, there's one thing actually missed, you can also actually check in the type of the error message. Because in here, we actually can store two error messages, right? You can say, this is required, and we're gonna say value equal four, and the message is gonna be, um, you exceeded. Length. Now we can check the error message in here. So to prove that it actually gave you the right amount of the context, so you can display the correct error message correspondingly. If I hit the submit, okay, first name, nice, we got the error message, and okay, I forgot to actually do this, right. Is it, was that maximum length? Uh, maximum length, yeah. So if I go up on to here, nice. I should be getting a, a correct error message. So this is actually really powerful because you can build uh, your validation rules. You can attach your, your message. Uh, it's going to be making your form building live hell out of you know fun and uh, interesting, I believe. Okay, I think I'm actually gonna wrap this up because um, this is supposed to be a really, really fundamental and, and, and simple tutorial. I think we showcased it nicely because there's not really much going on beside we're using a register function, we're, re we're using a handle submit, and we subscribe to the arrows object. You can even delete this when it comes if that annoys you. Um, I hope, I really hope you find this. Uh, video tutorial intuitive and easy to use 
before you actually dive into the deeper um, API section of this library because there's a lot more powerful things actually happen inside. But what I believe is um, I'm striking to providing a really, really great developer experience when we're building forms in React and at the same time providing great experience for end users. So I want to tick both box, developers and users. If, if we can make these two all happy, I, I believe we can truly building some really, really nice form and application for everybody to enjoy. Um, so, okay, I'm think I'm going to wrap up with this video. I hope you find this really useful. And if you like it, yes, you know, leave a start to the Get repo, um, GitHub repo. Um, subscribing to uh, Subscribe to me if you want. I, I don't upload video a lot, but if I do, it would be something like this. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.